Hello, and welcome back to Cruising Off Duty. Welcome to the 2019 Annapolis Sailboat Show. Every year we come down here and start checking out catamarans, looking for that future catamaran that Janice and I will live on and travel the world. This year we decided to narrow it down to just catamarans where we got a guided tour, so that means we did 11 catamarans this season. The first one is this episode, which is the St. Francis 50. I'm sure you're going to like it, so stay tuned. We anchor and hoist the sail. Okay, let me introduce you to Rourke. You work with St. Francis right now, is that correct? Yes, I'm the U.S. sales agent for St. Francis. Awesome, and you also own a boat, is that correct? We own Wanda Rose awesome. for today. So there you go. So you're going to take us on a detailed tour of this boat, St. Francis 50. I'm going to pretty much shut up and let you do all the talking and explain all the features. All right. All right. Now, uh, stay tuned. Well, it's day one, so I'm still fresh. Awesome. Let's do it. This is my first cad brand that I have purchased and owned. And I decided I really didn't want another boat that was not a St. Francis 50 because this had some of the features that were must-haves. They had moved away from just the wants. And the number one thing about the St. Francis 50 that people are attracted to is the helm position. And if you can step up to the helm position and perhaps even get a view, you'll notice that from the seated position, you can see all four corners of the boat. It makes it very simple to dock. Well, compared to having blind spots all over anyhow. You also have access to the starboard side deck, so you can participate in docking. You can throw that st uh, stern line over to somebody and then drive against it. Makes docking easier. Also, the windshield right here is ultimate. My previous mono hull was a Halberd Rossi, and I got very addicted to the glass windshield that it offers. Yeah. And this is really nice because it makes it quiet. It makes it, um, well, you know, there's not much draft coming through, so on a cold night, you're warmer. But the windshield wiper is clutch, and you need glass for that. It's not so much the rain, which is nice, but when I'm driving through fog for a couple hours a day, I can remove the fog off my windshield better than rain ice can. Mm -hmm. um, so I love the windshield. The windshield spans the entire um, uh, deck house there. Mm -hmm. So whenever you're at the helm, you are included in the action going on in the cockpit, which is quite nice. Yeah. And that'll also increase the likelihood that you're going to be at the helm, which increases the likelihood of dodging a stump or a yeah. 55 floating debris. Or something. <laughs> um, there are some features I like in the cockpit. This wraparound table is very communal and the bed uh, uh, bed is created when this table drops down, oh, the cushions okay. of which are stored underneath the table and it's accessible in this kind of hidden compartment from the aft port stateroom, which we'll see. Uh, where you are standing right now, Craig, this is a uh, wet locker, so I can throw my snorkeling gear in here and then rinse it on down, which is uh, pretty nice. It was originally a fish cleaning station, but now we clean off the back when we're so lucky to get the opportunity, right? Um, the the flow of the cockpit comes from one single door, which is the least likely that you would be pooped in the center of the boat and take water on up and in, so I like that, and it's a nice passage. Typically there is a 650 pound dinghy that is chocked up on the transom. Okay, on the wooden, the wooden transom? Mm -hmm. And that is uh, lifted via a uh, hauling line that comes off the retractable gantry pole in the boom. So uh, it, you can lift a lot of weight with your electric winch. It's a one-person operation, and then you're laying it in chocks as opposed to hanging it from dangling. Line, so it's micro dangle. Yeah. Um, there's a cooler that is uh, pretty darn nice uh, cooler. In the right weather, it does freeze up. And that's right here. So much in the Caribbean. Oh, yep. the refrigerated yep. beverage cooler. Awesome. Yeah. Okay. And um, as we walk on into the boat, if we're ready to do so. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we'll continue the salon is fairly spacious. Um, Lavranos designed this boat. He was into good flow. He did a great job. The galley is pretty wraparound with two other refrigeration units that are right here. Um, on our boat, we have got an extra cabinet right here, but right, right the next here. boat embraces that design of all glass back here, so you have a little better visibility and inclusion. And you can even hand through yeah. when people are already yeah. sitting at the table. And there's two the pass-through is nice. Oh, Two sinks is yeah. good. The high faucet's good. We have a rounded corners. 
rounded corners for everything. Yeah, I have a, um, a special needs uh, sister, and so I had everything rounded was mandatory for me because we never know when she's going to go down. So the mono hulls all have that. Cats have gotten away from it. They've gone on Euro it. Square design. Maybe it's a little more expensive to do some roundings, but it's good. Um, yeah. The same guys who did this cabinetry have been doing it for 25 years, and some of the people have been at the same company for 30 years. Um, all of our cabinetry is lightweight and we have a uh, soft touch so it doesn't wake up the crew when oh. you... Uh, do that one more time because I didn't do it on camera so you can't slam it. Oh. That is that no. is cool. And it also sucks it in so if you don't push it far enough, it does the rest That's for great. you. Uh, it has a proper nav station which allows great visibility out the windows. That is nice. And, um, you know, I guess you need fewer electronics now because I do a lot of stuff on my iPad with the CISO right. and I'm no, no means a master at that stuff, but it's pretty cool. The salon table also drops down to become a very large bed. Again, the cushions are in the same locker I mentioned earlier. And the television, you can view it lounging from either day bed because it's on an articulating arm. So this television, I think this is cool. Oh, so it cool. It around and then it notches up against the door so it doesn't bounce. That is and it's awesome. Just a sweet little well, love custom that. feature. You that know? is so good. Yeah. Because that's why we we'll probably sit out there a lot. So I say that it, it was a wow. Lebrano's design boat, and then Lethbridge, who just passed away recently, sadly, he uh, took a lot of the owner's ideas and he coordinated them and he infused them into the other hull. So being that this is a, about a 15-year-old boat, and when it was originally a 48, and it was quite different, you know, sunk in galley and stuff, but it was refined slowly into what you see here, as opposed to a brand new boat. Right. So we're not eligible for boat of the year, being that there's nothing earth shattering here, but some <laughs> things just work. Yeah, you just improve on it, right? You Every generation you just improve and fix the things that maybe past owners have said it would have been better if you'd done X or Y or Z, right? We appreciate the contributions. We can descend into the uh, owner's hall and we can go to port or forward first. Okay. Oh, nice so we have got a tremendous amount of storage from the hanging lockers to the um, all the dressers. This is the his on this boat. This is the hers on this boat. <laughs> Large hatches were added by a, a guy uh, a few hulls ago. His name was Hugh and we're very thankful for his contributions. On a 50 foot boat, you can have a transverse bunk. I suppose you could do it on a smaller boat, but then you wouldn't have the deck locker forward of it that you right. haven't seen yet. Yeah. And we have both on the St. Francis 50. So this is queen size. We're not getting special mattresses or sheets. Little charging station underneath here and at the lamps. Um, I don't ever really sit down other than to put my pants on or my socks. So, you know, this yeah. chair does it for us. We don't need the unusable uh, couch that becomes a hamper on something. <laughs> Very smart. Two person shower. Okay, I'll step in there. Please. Awesome. Raised sink, electric toilet, and a very large shower. Let me go right to the back and look backwards. Janice is going to get in with me. Woo, party shower. Oh, and uh, it's a, one of those rain head showers. Nice. Yeah, with 232 gallons of water and the water maker and a rain catchment system on the Bimini. Um, we encourage the rain showers. Yes. We have three of them on board. There's another one that's off um, on the transom for your snorkeling. It could almost be a, a, a shallow tub. Uh, yes, there's another one that is here at the show that has a tub there. It's a uh, 2011. Mm. Um, Craig, you might dig on some of this, but uh, we have got access to um, our mechanicals. Okay. And it, it, it's, you're pretty self-sufficient on this boat. Um, here we have the water maker. And, um, and what's the uh, what's the capacity like? How much? How many gallons per hour with the water maker? Or do you know that? Fourteen number? gallons per hour, okay. um, and it's DC. And there's a little pump sound that goes every yeah, yeah. Again, but that's but, to be expected. Yeah. Yeah. Um, aft here, um, this stateroom would um, this there you go. A bed right here has some ginormous lockers in the back, and that's where we keep our personal effects. Okay. Actually, if Meryl and I were to ever bare boat the boat, then we would put our personal stuff in there and lock it up. Right. Then the engine access is right here. outstanding. That's awesome. yeah. um, Jen, let's get in here and see it too. Peaky, peaky. Yeah, no, that's great. You can work in there. Yeah, it's a flattened bottom underneath the engine so I can lay a tool down if I need to, but also I don't wrench my ankles. Right. Um, there's illumination, which is great. 
It's very well insulated. You can hear it, of course, but I guess I've just gotten used to that over the years. Um, yeah, and we can check out the other stateroom, which is more finished. Oh, here is the washer dryer. Immediately yeah, in oh, that's something Janice loves. Oh, yeah. yeah. This is um, all of our boats. Um, there's a latch on the top. Oh, sorry. Here, pull it all, down, mother. All of our boats have got a um, plumbed section right there for a Splendide that's vented. We heard it was the best, and it's been great for us. So. Yay. Yeah, we actually had to modify the... Um, the jigs that make that locker to be about an inch, inch off to accept this one deep. Easy steps to go up and down. Yeah, they are comfortable. Requirement. Um, and they're not too steep. Some cats have are very steep. Like you feel like, ooh, one yeah. wrong, one wrong move, and you're taking a header. So. Um, descending down into the porthole, we have the uh, guest wing, I suppose. But there is a huge chest freezer, and then this is all pantry, pantry, open it? pantry, pantry. So, um, oh, nice. It's very nice for the crossing from South Africa, as you've done. And yeah. You know how sweet it is. Definitely. Yeah, it is. You well, definitely I need. You go back there okay. on your own, Craig. You just tell me what there is. Space. Uh, surely. Uh, this is almost an identical uh, aft stateroom. Oh, you can see the, the separate shower. And sweet head. Yep, with the separate shower. No shoilets. Yeah. <laughs> Good word. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and there's a single oh, child neat. bed on this oh, side, yes. behind which is the storage for those. So that would take up the equivalent space of what's the storage behind in the Correct. master. That's the size of how big wow, that that's locker a, is. Yeah. The warehouse. Yeah, you could put every belonging, every clothing belonging you have in there. Yeah. Get one of those vacuum seal things. And, and back here, there's more storage for this room. Hanging locker. Awesome. And there is a quicker access to the engine if you just want to check the belts and the oil, and it's underneath those cushions. So oh, I you see. You don't have to lift the whole yeah, yeah. enchilada. Okay. Um, so this cushion has the access to the, yeah. without having to lift the bed. Just flips up and for your daily check. Right. I like the separate shower. I do like that because a lot of boats to save space are actually just going into that shower over the toilet thing. So. Well, you know, that's just not where St. Francis is going. No. No, and I'm glad. Successfully for a long time. And this this is, is uh, where this is the second best room, I yeah. suppose, because yeah. it's just so large. Yeah. Slightly shallower shower, and that's how we have the um, hatch access on the deck into that four peak, which is outfitted to be a uh, hurt locker of a bedroom, we call it, like where my brother could stay, maybe. Oh, yeah. Um, so it's got a fan and a hatch, and it's got a screen and all, but that's normally where I put the sails. Right. Yeah, but even an emergency, if you had a last-minute guest, you could guests? you could actually I stick to have to stay there. I book the boat that way. Um, the escape hatches are all the way up forward because the catamaran will go stern down if it's upside down. So right. you don't have them in the middle. That's going to be submerged. Potentially. Okay, makes sense. And that, I think, wraps up the inside. But I think we have... Um, like 140 of these knobs on the St. Francis 50 to give you an idea of the storage. If you use it all to capacity, she's not a fast boat anymore. She mm -hmm. can't be with that much stuff in it. But the way we pack, we just don't cram everything so we ever have to reach to the back and move stuff to get to stuff. Right. That happens, but right. not right. that much. Exactly. All right, so, so let's, let's see the deck. The, let's do the deck now, yes. Real fast, how's my case? Oh, that's awesome. Okay, cool. So, <laughs> here's Meryl's chair hanging from that gantry. You can probably get it better from the, uh, the dock. And that's the that's the uh, gantry that we'd bring the dinghy up onto the uh, under the under the trucks here. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Indeed. So you step up with your right foot and then left foot. Up. Okay. Good decks. Hand holds. Um, pretty tremendous lockers. Two of them, and uh, a lot of space there. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't really take away from the two staterooms. Okay. Um, the windlass is very simple to access here, but what's cool on this boat is we have a really wide um, catwalk. Catwalk, yeah. So you can work the sails and do what you need to with a lot of solid footing. I love this, though. Um, I put on one of these Mantis chain hooks okay and I put it on through here and it just goes over my roller and then I can bring it back up over the roller so I'm not reaching forward to put on my chain hook like I yeah all my hanging hands. over the front of your boat yeah. Yeah. Um, it does have the screecher sail on a retractable bowsprit but this is a little different in that it's a retractable tube it doesn't fold over 
and that allows you to have the hinge properly up and down. Okay. So if you do hit a wave or something, it'll go up. Mm. There's a lot of load this way. Mm -hmm. If you have it hinged laterally, it's mm. it's not gonna do well up and down. Okay. So that makes a pretty large screecher if you're starting from way up there, right? Yes, it's a good sail. We also have a spinnaker, which you know is so simple to fly with yeah. a sock on one of these catamarans. Yes, we love, love a having a spinnaker. Okay. Yeah, it's easy to get around, custom, but we don't have a big play area up on the top. We have uh, some solar panels and it's more of a work area. We yeah. put cushions up there and such, but um, we want to keep everything sleek to reduce the windage. Right, and yet the good thing is you have your boom nice and low which mm -hmm. is, means you can work on it quite easy. Uh, as you know, I've been on other boats where the boom is quite high. So when you want to work on putting your sail actually in the sail bag, you're, you're practically climbing the mast. Well, what we do is we climb inside of the sail bag. Okay. And so we go up to the top and then get in and walk right on up this um, oh, okay. Coleman sail bag. Right. And then we stack pack it and do all that yeah. stuff. Um, it does have six steps to go up the mast. Right. But um, I think the crawl inside method is what you can use on big boats like this. Right. Okay, cool. And, and, and for Janice, the really large princess seat. <laughs> she saw that, she says. How do you like? Very nice. Awesome. Okay, well, Rourke, so thank you so much. I appreciate it. Cool. Love these guided tours. Get so much more information that way, and I'm sure the yeah. viewers like it as well. Yeah. Thanks a lot. Okay, so we just saw this at the very end. Um, this is an extra storage locker at the back. Uh, the Lazarettes are sugar scoop area. This is uh, this is usually where a lot of cats would have their engine, but this is just a massive storage area. I don't know if you can maybe make it out down there. Huge. And then you said the uh, what's on the other side in the same one? Uh, we have a generator. Generator. Okay. And still a lot of space. Yeah. And then these are scuba lockers, actually. Oh, okay. Scuba stuff. And then little seats. Awesome. We have a plumbed grill that's out here, like most boats. Ooh, this is a great thing, as you know. These oh. are starting to appear more and more on boats. Yes, yes. Fresh Get water, hot shower after yeah. your snorkel. That's awesome. Okay, Janice is just showing off the very large yeah, princess seats. Uh, yeah, princess seats. Actually, there's room for two there. There are. Theoretically, but I'm filming. Two, <laughs> room for two bums. And the Janice said that uh, Rourke mentioned something that wasn't mentioned on camera, that this boat has uh, rub rails, which is one of the few boats, you look down there, there's a rubber rub rail all the way along the side of the boat, which is a nice feature. And you probably noticed in there the two sinks. And yeah. The washer and dryer, which are must-haves. Yeah, so what do you think of this boat? This is awesome. It's very nice. Oh, it's, yeah, now he's, have everything. He said, though, the, the price is a bit up there for it's a 1.1 something he says delivered to Grenada uh, everything in about 1.2 million so it's a bit higher than we would want to spend but I mean the boat is super nice well, yeah, we, we can't afford that well, you know we hope that there might be a used one a used one <laughs> keep it in mind yeah. all right that's it for now bye, bye. A special thanks to Rourke for giving us that excellent guided tour. It was awesome. Now, we clearly like the St. Francis 50. We've liked it every time we've seen it. It seems like they're making improvements with each boat, though. If you look at these photos from their gallery, you notice the windows on the side are kind of smaller. And then when you see the spec sheet, which is probably the most recent boat, the windows on the side are longer. So they keep making slight improvements as each new model comes out. I guess owners put in their input about how they would like something different, and they listen. So that's a great sign. So even though this boat has been around for a while, there's constant little improvements and it stood the test of time. Now a lot of you are into the specs, they want to know everything about the boat, so I put this on the screen so you can read it. It gives you everything about its height, its weight, its displacement, it's one of the things that everybody seems to want to know is how high is the clearance off the uh, bridge deck. As you can see from the specs, it's two feet eight inches, which is that good? Is that bad? Here's a photo showing it under sail. You can see quite a bit of light underneath, so I think that's a really respectable amount of space. So there should be minimal amount of wave slap under the boat, and that's a good thing. So what is not to like? It is definitely a live aboard catamaran, something that Janice and I could clearly be comfortable in. Unfortunately, the price is just a wee bit too high for us, but there's always these kind of boats showing up on the used market. So we can hope that in a few years when we're retired and we're ready to go full-time sailing, one of these boats will be perfectly priced. Fingers crossed. Now, if you like catamarans, you're gonna to wanna to watch the next episode as well because there's another South African boat builder, Royal Cape Catamarans, Majestic 530. We've loved this boat in the past. There's some news too. This boat is gonna change its hull shape. They've got a new mold, so the new models are gonna have a new shape, new modern shape, which is good but there's a new price tag, which is bad. 
anyways, you're going to want to stay tuned to that. We have a guided tour by Ali, who's done the guided tour for us the last two years. She owns one of these boats, and clearly she loves it because she keeps coming to the show to showcase it for other people. Uh, yeah, anyways, stay tuned for that. If you enjoyed this episode and found it enjoyable and informative or whatever, give it a thumbs up. That shows the channel some love. And subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any future episodes. If you're out there sailing, just know we're green with envy because it's almost winter here and our boat's on the hard but if you are sailing, I wish you safe cruising and ciao for now. We anchor and hoist the sail.